Let me put you on game Don't listen to people who lose or you'll do the same Stop talking to people who don't give a f*** what you say Stop spending your money on weed, go hop on a plane Stop pointing the finger and stop Guys, welcome back to another episode of the Pursuit of Wealth Podcast Today we got an awesome guest with us, Mr. Jack Perry He is a founder of the Perry Group, which is the largest real estate team here in Salt Lake City uh, you guys did about 800 trans over 800 transactions and 400 mm-hmm. something million in volume last year, right? Yes, yes, which is yeah. incredible. Yeah. So we're gonna dive into uh, your story, how you guys got here, why you guys started a team, and and maybe even what you were doing before real estate. Okay. So, tell us where did where did life start for you, Jack? Did you grow up here in Salt Lake? I uh, no, originally from the East Coast. Okay. Uh, was 20 years old, and I moved from Virginia to Salt Lake, and I at the time when I moved here, I thought, hey, I, I had never been further west than Ohio and wanted to get to see what the west was like. And so yeah. I thought, hey, this is a great opportunity. Moved out here and back in 1979 and wow. been many years later. What what drew, your, what drew you to Salt Lake in particular? Uh, my brother and his wife were going to the University of Utah and they, okay. and they asked me to come out. So I drove across the country and Got here and I loved it. It's completely different than the East Coast. Yeah. Oh yeah. You and you're in New Jersey? Is that no, Virginia. Virginia. Okay. Right. I'm honestly I've never really I've, the only place I've been on the East Coast is New York. I've been in New York City. Oh, okay. That's about it. Okay. So I don't yeah. really know it. Yeah, my parents still live in the same house. Wow. Um, they bought in nineteen sixty four. Wow. Um, they've lived in it all these years. They're ninety two and ninety. Wow. And they live in a split level home. Um and it's one of those things that, you know. 20 minutes from Washington, D.C. So the history and all that stuff from the, you know, Washington, D.C. area is pretty remarkable. Yeah. Do you miss it? Do you, do you, ever, do you go back often? I go back a couple of times a year. I do. I really do miss it. I think it's, and I really do think, you know, the history of it. Yeah. I mean, we were minutes walking distance from, you know, Mount Vernon, George Washington's home. Yeah. And it's like, it's completely different. Um, when you, when you think about all the rich history of the, you know, the great country we live in. Oh yeah. So coming to Salt Lake, was that like, it, was it a culture shock for you? Was it a lot different than where you grew up? Oh, it was a lot different. Yeah. But I think, I think it was, I was 20 at the time and I was like, man, what am I doing with my life? What am I, you know, what's, what is trying to figure out as a 20 year old, what life is all about. And so I thought, Hey, this is, it's, you know, it's not as crowded it's completely different. You know, we have mountains yeah. here back east. You know, they have small hills. So it was kind of <laughs> a culture difference in that way. It's so much different. Yeah. And it, I mean, you came here in 79? 79. 79. And obviously Salt Lake has grown a ton over yes. that time. So yes. uh, it's getting more. People would say it's probably, it's it's a lot more populated. And right. A lot more right. people than when you first moved here. Um, what did you do for work when you first came out here? So, so it's an interesting story. How, like people ask, like, "Hey, you've been doing real estate a few years. What did you do before?" Yeah. I was a pastor in Salt Lake City for for twenty eight years at different wow. churches. And wow. it, it was something, one of those things that that I always loved and thought. I really thought I was going to do it the rest of my life, but early fifties, it was a little turn of events. I thought, "Hey, I want to try something new." Really? So, what at what age did you become a pastor? I was twenty five. Twenty five. Yeah. What what interested you or triggered that? Were you going to school for that? Or? Yeah, basically, I went to a Bible college in California. Then I came back here, and I think you know I always have this des- deep desire to. To me, it's all about people. It's about yeah. helping people, and I think as a pastor, I I really loved the challenge of that. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I did it for twenty eight years. My wife and I, we really thought we were going to do it forever because yeah. I really loved. It. I had a I had a passion. I had a love for not only, you know, learning spiritual things, but also about helping people. Cause I, that's what it's all about. Yeah. hundred percent. Did, uh, so you, so you got into real estate after 28 years of being a pastor. Yes. What, why, what caused that? I think I was just at the place. I mean, you could say, Hey, it was a midlife crisis. It was just something I was like, man, I, I kind of want to try something a little bit different. So I, if people had, people would ask me before, if you got out of real, I mean, got out of being a pastor, what would you do? And I would say, I'd love to be a real estate agent. Really? So I got my license and then I thought, Hey, this is a great thing. And, um, you know, as a pastor, I would work, you know, every Saturday, Sunday, getting ready for church. 
real estate, work every Saturday, Sunday, doing open houses. So it's kind of like, it's a great opportunity. It's been a great opportunity for me. Yeah. Maybe a little bit easier transition being self-employed already. Yes. Essentially as yes. a pastor right. to real 100%. estate. What a going, how, how would financially, how is it being a pastor? Is there, well, it was, I, I have no it was, idea. It was rough being a, being a pastor. I mean, it was, you know, it was, you were never going to, have a lot of money yeah. and you know and i could like i never had a new car i had a, every car i ever bought when i was a past was a pastor had a hundred thousand miles on it i mean people would give me cars because <laughs> they felt like this guy needs a nicer car and so when i got into real estate mm, excuse me i got into real estate i remember when i bought my first car it was brand new zero miles on it and i, I thought this is just wonderful yeah because i i feel like i mean there's there's some pass out, pastors out there that probably make really good money but it's that's a very hard career path to make make it work financially right yes yeah um, and and not you know not only fi you know financially i mean it's i i feel it's one of the hardest jobs in the world i mean yeah. you're like it's one of those things it's 24 hours a day seven days a week but i i, I can honestly say i loved it yeah and i like would I get back into it? You know, there might, it's, it's in me. It's, Still in it's you. never left me. It's yeah. just saying, you know, this time in my life and, and with our, with our team and everything like that, I, I, it's It'd be hard to go back. Yeah. Hard to go back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what were some of the lessons you learned as a pastor? You know, 28 years is a long career doing that. Is there any what, valuable lessons you kind of learned along that journey? I think I learned that probably the most, we all make mistakes. Mm -hmm. We're all, we all have different quirky personalities. I mean, you're like, we have, we all have struggles. We all have issues. Nobody has it together. Yeah. And, you know, some people are more outgoing. Some people are, are less outgoing. Some people are like deep down, I'm a, I'm a quiet person. It's like, I'm just like love spending time with my immediate family do it. And I'm like, it's, and so, but being a pastor, I, I loved it, loved helping people, you know? And so I loved talking to people. Yeah. That's, I, I think, I mean, being a pastor is probably, I would assume like the hardest part is you, you probably hear a lot of the struggles yes. of individuals. Cause that's, you know, they come to their church leaders or their pastors right. to, yeah. um, was that ever hard for you kind of, feeling like he took on the weight of a lot of people's problems. It, it really was, but I also had my personality. It was like, I would like it. I knew I couldn't take that on, take that on. And it was like, I would like, and I think I hit, I, and this is where I think I got from my mom is that if you have a bad day, just go to sleep and then tomorrow we'll wake up and it'll be different. Yeah. And I think that's how it was for 28 years. I would be like every day I'd wake up and like, Hey, it really is a new day. Mm -hmm. And I think that really helped me to realize, Hey, that you could have had a stressful bad day before, but man, the next day is completely different. Yeah. It's a good way to think about it. It's a restart. Yeah. Close your eyes and wake up and it's a, it's a new start. Eight hours later. It's <laughs> like, <laughs> that's awesome. So Making that transition, what, how was it transitioning into real estate and what spiked your interest about real estate? I, I think it was the, you know, I got in it in 09 when okay. the market was not doing what well. was yeah, crash. Right after the crash. I mean, people would ask me like, like, man, why are you going into real estate? It's, it's a terrible time to go in into it. And I would say, man, if you knew what I did before, <laughs> this job's a piece of cake. And so I always looked at real estate. It was like, man, it's, it was, it's about helping people yeah. follow their dreams, get into their house that they wanted. And so I think if you look at it that way, whatever job it is, real estate can be a lot of fun. Yeah. And getting into it at that time, like you had to actually value what you're doing in the work because it wasn't going to be an easy time to do it. Yeah. I was like the last three years, we've seen a lot of people get into real estate. Right. They don't really care about real estate right. or care about yeah the job. They yeah. just wanted to try to make money. Oh yeah. And, and what happened is I would show 25 houses on a Saturday mm -hmm. and then I would call my client and say, do you want to make an offer? And they said, Jack, I want to look at the 25 new homes that came on the market. Yeah. So it was like, it was a completely different struggle than we have now. Then yeah. you people were like, 
hey, let's just let's just wait to see what happens. You know, nowadays, people say, oh, I'm going to wait for the interest rates. Back in 09, people were like, when the short sales, like, you know, how many other short sales will there be? Yeah. So it's just, it's, things are always just changing. Yeah, 100%. And one thing that I, I try to reflect on too uh, and, and reflect with our clients is there's always, there's never that perfect time to buy real estate. You right. know, it's like, even people, that meme goes around on social media, like, oh, I wish I wasn't in, you know, in high school when the crash happened or else I would have bought a lot of real estate, you know, or right. I wish I was a kid. I wish I could afford to, to buy houses in 2009. The truth is a lot of people, even if you were that age and you could afford right. it, you probably wouldn't have bought houses Yeah, because there was the right. fear of like, is the market going to recover? Right. There's right. always a fear in the market. And right now the fear is like, is the market going to crash? Are right. interest rates going to continue to go up or are interest rates going to decrease? You know, right. nobody knows, but Looking back, we always think like, oh, I would have done that because it would have right. been an easy decision. My parents bought a lot of houses in 2012. It wasn't an easy decision. Right. Like, there was right. still that, the nerves of, does the market recover? You know, what's going to happen with real estate? You had to believe that it was good investment long-term. Right. So I think if like you're a buyer in today's market, if you can believe that it's a good investment long-term, it's a good time to buy. Right. Nobody knows the future. You're never right. going to time it perfect. Right. But I will tell you this. If you need a place to live you might as well buy it. Yeah. Because your, your money is going to go somewhere. And you go, Jack, I don't know. I bought my, my wife and I bought our house in 88 for 70,000. Homes in our area are going for eight, 900,000. That is the reason why you want to buy a home. Yeah. You're like saying, hey, I can't afford it. It's like, I'm going to continue to rent. I don't know what's going to happen. When we bought it 35 years ago, we didn't ask ourselves, is the market going up and down? We needed the place to live. Yeah. So we said, let's buy a house. I, if my best advice for anybody is get that out of your head. Yeah. Get the, like, I, my house was nine and a half percent interest. Yeah. The interesting part is this, the house that my wife and I bought our house from, I've sold like five houses to the family that we bought our house from. Really? So we might have overpaid when we bought it in 88, but I've made it back by selling the family. Houses. Houses. <laughs> so I look at it. Hey, when's it, you've heard the phrase, when was the best time to plant a tree? Mm -hmm. 20 years ago. When's the second best time today? Yep. I feel it's the same way with, if you, like you said, if you're trying to time the market, good luck, have fun. When you think you timed it. You probably have it. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like, if anybody knew how to time the market exactly, like they would be very, very, very wealthy. Yes. Um, but you're like your, you're like your example, just plant, start planting the, the seed, right. start planting the tree and let it grow. Right. Um, yeah. and you know, water it, take care of it and it'll grow to be a big tree in 20 years, yeah. you know? So yeah. it's like the same thing with the houses. If you look historically, even in dips or up cycles, like over a long enough period of time, real estate's always gone up. Right. Um, so, and like you said, I mean, always, it's always gone up. Yeah. I mean, we might have a few slow years here and there, but if you look at people that bought a hundred years ago, yeah, it's <laughs> gone up pretty good. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying it's just we might have slow years, yeah, but then in the long haul, you it's think. Gonna, and you think about that with anything, right? Gas, right? The cost of milk, cost right. of bread, right? It's like it's always gone up. Yeah, yeah. But there's been years where maybe it came down a little bit, but then it's always right. trended up. The cost of everything has gone up. Yes, and so yes. like. Wouldn't you like to own something that's going to go up? Right. Or are you just going to continue to pay more for it? Because rents are always going up as well. Yeah. So you look at like, you think about inflation. We have inflation. It's like costs, it causes the price of goods to go up. Right. You might as well own some of those goods along right. the way. Yeah. Instead of just paying more for them every right. time you need them. Right. So I, you look at, I've seen that graph of people, you know, the gap between people that have rented over the right. last 10 years and people that have bought homes and the wealth gap between there. Yeah. It's just gotten massive yeah. people talk about the wealth gap it's like well they're not doing anything spectacular people are just following the plan of buying a home and doing these you know investing into their retirements and right right over time that gap becomes a lot less or a lot bigger than the people that just haven't done anything right so get in the game like yeah. that's the biggest and, thing and, and the, really the, the thing is if you think about it this way is like i've lived in the same house 35 years i'm a real estate agent and you're like are you going to move? I haven't. So in 35 years, you haven't seen a house that's better than what you have. Yeah. 
I, I have, but you know what the greatest thing is I can go home tonight and my wife and I don't have to have a discussion. Should we move? Do you want to go? It's like, to me, that is, that's priceless. That's worth the non-stress Yeah. in it. Like we're like. You're just happy where you're at. Yeah. And yeah. then it's like, Hey, you can do so much more stuff. Otherwise you're, you're fighting, you're arguing. Oh, I like that house. I don't like that. Let's move. And it's like, Hey, 35 years, we're still there. That's awesome. That's super cool. So getting into real estate, your first year, what was it like your first year in real estate in 2009? It was hard. What did, what did you do to get business? I, I did open houses. I, I, I'm a open house person. I love them. I think they're the greatest thing I would do two, three, four a weekend, do them for wow. three hours. I would put 30 or 40 signs out. To me, it's I, like my, that was my niche. Yeah. If you said to me today, Jack, would you want to go do an open house for three hours today? Being on Monday, I'd say, let's go for it. Really? I, I just think it, it was something that I loved doing. I loved, I loved, and it was like, to me, the exercise putting the signs out was <laughs> something that I love to do. Yeah. And then, you know, the thing about open houses is the people are coming to you. So you get to talk to them. And so I, I it was something that I love. So I, I would tell people, whatever your niche is, you got to stick to it and do it. And that's, I did one open house with a, a, a another agent. We had two people show up. We put up about two signs that week. I went to the sign shop and bought, 20 signs. And since that day, back in 09, yeah. I did open up. And you go, when's the best time to do open houses? Every day but Christmas <laughs> and Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. My best open house ever was 2009, the Saturday, Sunday after Christmas. Really? Because nobody else had anything to do. They were yeah. either going shopping and they would see the 20, 40 signs and they were like, huh. hey, Swing let's go. Swing by the open house. Smart. I, I try to drive that into our agents too. It's like find a niche, find something that you want to do for lead gen right. and like commit. Yes. Cause like, I think open houses are a great way to, to get business. If you commit to doing them, you're going to have an open house where like nobody shows up. Right. But that's why you said another open house. Cause you're going to have an open house where 20 people show up right? and you can get a buyer yes. from it. Um, but like you said, there are people that are out coming to you. It's different than making your cold calls or doing something like that because they're coming to you. They're interested in a house. Those are right. Nobody wakes up on a Saturday and is like, I'm going to go to an open house because I'm not interested in buying a home. Right. Or they're bored. Yeah. yeah. It's like, they're going to go to an open house because they're curious about the market. They're curious right. about that home and have a conversation and strike up. Why did they, what, what, why are they out today? You right. know, they're out looking yeah. at houses. There's a reason, Yeah. you know? And people come to open houses for two reasons. One, because they're a buyer Yep. or two, they're thinking of selling their home, but they come in and say, oh, I'm just a nosy neighbor. Yeah. They say that because they don't want to be bothered. Yeah. It's the so, same reason you go to a store and you're like, hey, do you need help any day? No, I'm just browsing. Yeah. But you're looking mm. for something. Right. You know? Yeah. You're going for a t-shirt, but you're not going to say it because you don't want to be bothered. Yeah. I mean, like you can see I these shirts. I go I, when I go shopping, the salesperson say, Jack, can I help you? No, I'm I know what I'm looking for. Yeah. It's like, don't bother me. I like like and I tell people in the same thing. I said the clerk would be like, Can I help you? I was like, ma'am, sir, I said, I love your help but I'm looking for a certain shirt and like, what shirt are you looking for? Like, you got to understand this. I don't own a solid colored shirt in my closet. So it's like, I got to It's like, it's not like I'm looking for a blue or a white shirt. I'm looking for a shirt like this. Really random. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, I like, like what, what shirt am I looking for? Yeah. And so it's, and that's, but, but buying a home just as real estate agents, like you were saying, find your niche, find what you're, like if you said to me, I want you to, I want you to cold call expired listings, I would say I'm getting out of the business. Mm. But you say go do an open house in the dead of winter when it's snowing outside, I'm on it. Yeah. And I love that. Find what find what you're I try to dr drill it into our agents. Find what you're okay doing. Right. Because if you're okay doing it and you like you can be consistent at it, it's gonna provide results. Yes. But if you don't enjoy it and you're not gonna be consistent, then there's no point in you doing it. Right. Because you're not gonna get the results. Because right. it takes time. Yeah, you, know, you got to right. be doing. I have a buddy that does it in our market, and he—that's all he does for lead gen. He does just open houses, and it's where he gets all his business. And he closes consistently two hundred fifty to sometimes four hundred thousand dollars in GCI a year right. yeah. from from open houses. Yeah, and I mean with open houses, I'll like 
our team will, I'll drive around and I'll see them put signs out. I'll mo- I'll get out of my car and move them. Like, why in the world did you put the sign there? No one can see it. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, I, I'm i like overboard. You got to do them right. Yeah. That's, and I, if you're going to do the open house, you're going to take the time out of your Saturday. Right. Do it right. Right. Do the, do the pre, pre-open house work, put it on social media, do your right. stuff, get your, yeah. get the, make calls to the neighbors, do flyers in the neighborhood. Right. Like do it the right way. Yeah. You're going to have a better result. Yes. So yeah. how did, uh, getting into real estate your first year financially, was it a success for you and your, and your, I mean, my back? first year I did three homes. Okay. Um, it was, you know, my first home I sold was 167,000 and it was like, you know, it was, um, no, it was not successful. <laughs> so what, yeah, would not call the, the that first two years, it was the third year I sold nine homes and then it, and then it started taking off after that. I, I, my thing is real estate's a lot harder than what people think. They think, 100%. Hey, I get my license and sell a couple of homes. And you have all of these families selling homes, but I, I real estate's hard and it's, you got to work those weird hours, but you got to, I think it's all about, you know, do you have the passion? Mm-hmm. And to me, you know, first year was three homes, then six homes and then nine, nine homes. It was hard. Yeah. But you stuck it out. Yes. And now look where you're at. Yes. Hey. So getting into like year, year 10 and you're in it 14 years. When did you guys start the team? How long had you been in when you started the team? We started in 2018. Okay. So you'd been in it almost 10 years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why, why did you go from solo agent to starting a team? I, I think it was, you know, I originally started off with, one of my sons, Michael, and one of his friends, Mason. And it was like, and I think we just started. It was like, hey, let's just try it. Yeah. And then we it, we started getting momentum and it started to be, to be fun. And, you know, with your kids, you always want them to be successful. Yeah. So it would, I would say to Michael and Mason, okay, we're going to do an open house, but I'm going to put all the signs out for you and you guys get all the clients. And so I would put all, you know, 40 signs and try to get people to their open house. So we kind of started it and it just, I think they started getting momentum and it was, a, it was a lot of, it was, you, cause you know, the thing about a team yeah. is you have that accountability mm-hmm. and I think you're like, you're like, okay, I'm going to be at the office by nine. Then you gotta be at the office. The hard part, I think with solo agent is man, is who you're list who you're answering to. Yeah. And it's like, you're like, oh, I don't feel like going to work today. I just think it's hard. Yeah, I I agree. I was a solo agent for a little bit before we ran the team, and it was uh, my schedules were sporadic. Um, yeah, I, you don't know what to do, and then it, it wasn't as fun. Yeah, like you're going and doing open houses by yourself. You're, you know, writing offers, and you got nobody to celebrate with. You're just right. kind of like rooting yourself on, which is good. Good. I mean, great for those that can do it, but I feel like having a team, if you have the right culture and you get in the right environment, right, it can push you to do so much more than you could have as a solo agent. Yeah. Like you're going to have people that you're competing with, like, you know, to, to outproduce and right. you're celebrating each other's wins. And, um, and then you have support. Like right. I, I, I have a listing. I need somebody to send my open house so that I can't, you know, somebody on the team probably can. And, yeah. you know, yeah. I or if you're, you know, having a bad day or don't know how to handle this offer, you have somebody to bounce it off. Yep. And I think that really makes it a lot easier. So when we started the team, we I we had no like big plans. I think yeah. we just wanted to do it, and then it started getting momentum, and then we started adding a couple more agents, and then it's like, hey, this is a lot of a lot of fun. Yeah. Um. And so it just kept on going. Going. You guys are at how many agents right now? We're at about eighty-five agents. Eighty-five agents, incredible. Number one team in Salt Lake. So yeah. that's you know you've been doing it since twenty eighteen. So that's in a five year span or so that you've become the number one team in Utah. Um, what's you're kind of more on the, I would say like CEO managing right. the team right. in the, in it with the agents. Um, what do you, what have you noticed with agents? Like what's their biggest struggle in real estate? I think the biggest struggle is we don't work as hard as we say we do. <laughs> I, I, if I just had to be honest with yeah. you, I, Somebody might be showing homes this Saturday and they, they spend hours Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday on the MOS looking at homes. And it's like, and you go, what did you do today? Oh man, Jack, I, I, 
I found 10 homes that we're going to see on Saturday. I've been looking on the MLS for four hours a day. And it's like, you did what? Yeah. Like, and so I, I just, I just think that's the biggest thing is they just, they don't know how to organize their time. And like, to me, if you're on the MOS, MOS looking at homes, you're not working. Yeah. And I tell people this, and I really mean this, what you can do at nighttime, do at nighttime. Yeah. What you can do during, only do during the day, do during the day. Yeah. You can't make phone calls at 11 o'clock at night. No. You can't show homes. You can't like go look at homes. Yeah. And I just, and I think people get in the, like, what did you do today? Oh, I, you know, I, I read articles on this or I listened to like this podcast. Yeah. Like don't listen to this from nine to eight o'clock at night. Listen yeah. to it nine o'clock at night Yeah. or early in the, when you're going to work out. But people will be like, oh, I got to, I got to get more educated. And it's like, we already know everything we need to do. Yeah. I, I can't agree with you more. And I think you, you really hit it on the head. Uh, cause I see it with my agents all the time too. It's like, what are they doing today? They're uh, in the office searching, you know, the MLS checking the hot sheet, which I think is important, you know, like know what's in your market, but you can't spend all day doing that. Right. Like, how are you going to get clients? Who cares if you can know every house on the market, but if you have no clients, what's the point? Right. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. you're not going to make yeah. any money by knowing what's yeah. on the market. And and then it's like when I first got into real estate, this one, um, he was kind of like, he was like leading a class. He would say, you can go home every day when you set an appointment. So if you get to the office at nine and you have an appointment set for later that day or the next day, if you have it set at nine ten, you can leave nine ten. Hmm. But you can't go home until you set an appointment. Yeah. So eight o'clock at night, you call your significant other and say, Hey, will you bring me a sleeping bag, my toothbrush, my pajamas? Because <laughs> I have to spend the night here. Yeah. And they'll go, like, why? Because I made a commitment to Jack that I would get one con one appointment. Yeah. How many nights are you gonna sleep at the office? You can want to get out there. After after one night, you're gonna what what you know, your significant other, your wife or your spouse, you're gonna your kids. Yeah. You're, you call your kids and say, I can't come home. Where are you at, Dad? I have to sleep on the couch because I didn't get any appointments today. But we do is you get it. You don't get appointments. You just go home and start the next day. You do the, you repeat the same thing. So this person says, whenever you set the appointment, you can go home. Because if you spend a night at the office, you'll learn very quick how important it is. Because if you don't have an appointment, you don't have a client. hundred percent. I, I, uh, man, I really, I, I appreciate you sharing this because it's so, it sounds so simple, oh, but, yes, but explaining yes. it to agents, like they're like, yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. But then it's, they, they come and complain like, ah, oh, I'm not making the kind of money I thought I'm going to look for a part-time job. Right. I'm like, wait a second. You're going to go get a part-time job working for somebody else. You haven't even put in, you haven't even given yourself the opportunity to, to make this work. Right. Cause what are you doing on a daily basis? It's like, if I wasn't making the money I needed to, I would not leave this office until I set an appointment. Right. Why are you leaving at noon? Right. Well, I don't have anything to do today. Yeah. You need to make something to do today. Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can't, you can't just go home and like hope somebody's going to call you to sell their home. Right. It's like, you need to go generate that business right. and make a commitment to yourself. Right. But I, I, I don't know about you guys, but it's really hard to find people nowadays that are willing to make that kind of commitment for themselves. And I think that's the, you know, probably any business, anything, but you, it's just like, you, you got to work. I mean, yeah. it's like, I mean, I like, like I said, I probably have done a thousand open houses that are, and I don't do these like two hour open houses. Minimum is three hours. Yeah. Minimum is 30, 40 signs. I mean, it's, a, it's a commitment. Yeah. And I, and I think, I think we, we have got to, you know, real estate agents or in the sales business, man, it's, it's, it's a commitment. And the people I've learned this, the people that are successful at it, there's a reason why they're successful at it. They, Cause they put in the hard work. If you talk to them, they're working 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. And like if you put the hard work in the agents on our team that are successful. They got one thing, one thing in common and it's hard work. Mm -hmm. They put in the time. Yep. You know, you might get a lucky person that sell a home here and there, but if you don't put the time in, 
I, I can say it's going to be hard. Yeah. Your luck will eventually run out. And then eventually exactly. sooner than you think. Yeah, exactly. Um, you gotta be willing to commit to the, to the daily tasks, um, as an agent. And I think so many people just miss that boat. They, they get, it's really hard being self-employed because yes. you got, even, even if you're on a team, you know, you're still an independent contractor, right? You're still like a 10 and nine, you're still running your own business. I can tell you what you should be doing. Right. I can't really force you to be doing certain yes. things. Yeah. So it's still up to you to make a decision to commit to yourself, to try to hit those goals. Right. And it comes from activities. Yes. Like, I don't know how everything is from, I just break it down. It's like, it comes from conversations. Right. If you're not having a conversation, you're not going to set an appointment and you're not going to have business. Right. So what do you want to do to generate those conversations? Yeah. You can sit open houses, you can do content, have conversations with people and you know, social media, but then you also got to be like, not just doing the content, like talking to them, reaching out to people, messaging them. Yes. Um, or you can make, calls like there's a lot of things you can do pick which one you want to do right but you got to be committed to have conversations right so i think this market that we're in is going to weed out i mean it already has it's weeded out a lot of agents but i think it's going to weed out even more over the yeah. next six months yeah because yeah. people are going to realize they have they have to work you didn't like last two three years you could just wait you know and your aunt and uncle or somebody who's going to buy a home your cousin your friends um because interest rates were so low people were just transacting all the time right Right. People aren't transacting all the time. Yeah. So when I got in in 09, there was 6,000 agents in the state of Utah, 18,000 homes. Now it's kind of almost, we have now 18,000 agents and, you know, 9,000 homes on the market. And it's like, you just, and I, like, I hate to say it, this market, like you said, is going to get, it's going to get people out of the real estate business. Yeah. And it's, the people that work hard, stay in it, are going to do well. Hundred percent. Do you? What are you guys telling your agents right now? Uh, what kind of advice are you giving them going into this market? My, it's the same thing. I give people the same advice all the time. Yeah. Work hard, and you'll be successful. There's n- the only difference between '09 and now. It's ju- it's different. Is it a, is it a seller's market, buyer's market? I don't know what type of market it is. I, it's it changes from day to day. But I can tell you this thing, hard work pays off. If if you didn't work hard three years ago when the market was crazy, you didn't do well. Yeah. And it's it's the same thing now. If you don't work hard, you're not gonna you're not gonna do well. I mean it's succeed. it's it's not a rocket science thing. If you don't make appointments, you're not gonna close deals. Yeah, it's like people try to make, Try to complicate it. Complicate it. It's successful agents. If you looked at their time schedule, Mm -hmm. they work hard. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to, you say you want to make a hundred thousand dollars. Well, show me your calendar first. Right. And I can predict whether or not you're going to actually make it. Because if there's nothing on there, there's a good chance you're not going to make it. Right. Yeah. So I, I'm a firm believer in that. And I, we've tried really hard to kind of help our agents categorize their days. Right. Um, but again, it's hard. It's hard to make them commit because within real estate, you don't see the reward right away. Right. And that's the hardest part. Yeah. Is like people say, "Oh, real estate agents make so much money." It's like, well, they make money on the transaction, but like how much time and effort, how many things they've done to try to get to that transaction, right, adds up. Like there, 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 there's days or months where they might not be making anything, right. But they're trying to generate the business to then eventually get to that transaction. Right. Yeah. And you're not going to see the results right away. You're not going to sit your first five, 10 open houses. You might not get a buyer. Right. Right. But you got to keep going. Right. And that's what's so hard for people is like, they only want to do something if they know it's going to work. Right. Give me, they, they want the, give it to me and then I'll do. Right. Yeah. But it's like, you got to do and then you'll get. Right. Yeah. You don't say, uh, yeah. give me abs and then I'll go to the gym. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you got to go to the gym and then you'll get the abs. Right. <laughs> And I, and I think the thing is you you find out what your niche is and yeah. then stick to it and stick to it for six months. At least. Because like, if you're going to do an open house and you have a good one, bad one. I've had some open houses when when, when no one has come. Mm-hmm. The, the question that you ask yourself, you have no one come to the open house. What did you do for those three hours? Oh, I made my grocery list. I like, you know, I played games on my phone. It's like, can you imagine going back to your boss and say, Hey, what did you do today? You go, man, no one came to my open house. So what did you do? Man, you, you wouldn't believe this, but I had so much fun playing games on my, my phone. And I think that's the thing. It's like, 
like, like if I had an open house and no one showed up, it'd be like, I'm calling people, texting people, like trying to generate business. And it was, it was great because I like, I'd be doing an open house and on the phone. And all of a sudden, so I see somebody pull up and I would tell my client on the phone, Hey, I got to go. Can I call you back in 10 minutes, 15 minutes? And they would be like, sure. Call me back. Yeah. And it, so it was like, I was like, I figured it out. It was like, I was like getting paid for doing two things at the same time. And I think that's the thing is find your niche, whatever it is, and then stick to it for six months. If it's door knocking, do it for six months. Yeah. Be, yeah. I love, you know, be productive. Use that time to actually do something. I, I imagine like, even if you're not in, you don't have a boss when you're in real estate, really. It's like, go home and tell your wife what you did. Yeah. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, no, it's like, I'm, yeah. Go home and be like, yes, yeah, so, you know, or maybe if your spouse is in real estate, when they get home, like ask them, what'd you do today? Yeah. Cause I'd be curious. I'm like, I would be really embarrassed. Some of my agents, I'd look at them and be like, I'd be really embarrassed to go home and tell your spouse what you did today. You yeah. came into the office. You talked about fantasy league. Right. You planned to go to lunch. You went to lunch, you know, right. and then you went home. Yeah. So like yeah. go home to your kids and, and be like, yeah, daddy, what'd you do all day? I was in the office and I, talked and didn't do anything productive and yeah you know how many times are you going to have that conversation with your wife and she's going to be like, okay you need to probably do something else right so i i look at that as if i'm going to be away from my my family i want to make sure that that time is productive right and so if i'm going to commit to being in the office i'm not just coming to the office to hang out i'm going to come in the office to do something to lead gen to do something to set appointments to do something to progress my business yes so that i can feel good when i go home right like right hey i I was gone all day because I did something That's productive. Tough. Yeah, no, it's a good point. <laughs> you know? So if you're an agent out there, you know, try that. I think that would be motivating. Just go home and tell your spouse what you did today and see how many times you have to tell her you did nothing and you'll maybe kick it into gear. Yeah. Yeah. Or she say, I want that job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, she might not because you're not making any money oh, probably. Yeah, that's so true. That's she's, true. She's probably going to say you need a new job. Yeah. Um, what do you think the market's going to be doing right now? I mean, you guys run a big team in Salt Lake. You see a lot of transactions. Um what, what, how do you feel about the market? First of all, I want to say no one has any idea. I, I don't, if it's the feds or I it's like, I don't think they, no one knows from, from For day sure. to day. I do know this, that times change. I, I do think the next couple of months are going to be hard, which are, you know, Utah is typically hard because it starts snowing. Mm -hmm. People are going skiing. The roads are bad. You got the holiday season and it's like, you don't want to show homes at four o'clock in the afternoon. It's freezing, snowing, like yeah. So you just put everything on hold. So I think things are going to slow down a little bit, but I think after the first of the year, I think they're going to ramp up. And my thing is this: Do we know how many buyers have said, "Hey, this is not a good time to buy because of interest rates that are"? I probably have three or four clients of myself. Mm -hmm. We have 18,000 agents. Yeah. If everyone has three or four, that's 50,000 people. Waiting to buy. Waiting to buy. Yeah. And that's who we know of. Yeah. And I would say agents are our team. They probably have five, 10 people saying, hey, I'm going to wait. So I do know this. You hear people say when the interest rates change, it's going to go crazy. That will happen. But I really believe in the spring of next year, you're going to see people, it's going to, people are like, whatever the interest rates, people are like, Hey, I, I got to do it now. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, if you wanted to move two years ago because your home was too small because your kids were getting bigger, what's happened after two years, the homes even gotten smaller. So there's going to be a greater urgency to move in the spring this year. And I, I think it's going to be like, man, keep on doing the stuff you're doing and you're going to see in the spring no matter what in, you know, for interest rates stayed the same. Yeah. If they go to 10 or 12, that's a completely different story. Yeah. I don't think they are. Yeah. yeah but yeah. if they stay at seven or eight, I think it's going to be crazy. And let me just say this. If they go down to five, oh. it is going to be get ready because it is going to be crazy. And uh -huh. the home prices are just going to go up. And you say, Jack, you sound like a, a real estate agent, a salesperson, like don't buy. Yeah. Just continue to rent. And you tell me, tell me after five years, how much money you have in equity in your home. Yeah. Like I tell people, Hey, like, wait, wait. I mean, I paid nine and a half percent interest. Yeah. Wait, 
If I imagine if I had waited. Yeah. And I think I just think you just you just got to do it. And I think as agents, we got to communicate to our people like, hey, it's now it's getting the, there's too many people on the back burner. They're going to start coming forward. Hundred percent. And I I agree. I agree a ton. I think there's so much pent up demand that right. as soon as rates come down, I think as soon as rates come below seven, we'll see a lot of it. Yeah. As soon as if they get below six, it's like game over. Like yeah. They're gonna they're gonna. Yeah. I mean, a few weeks ago, I mean, like last week, we had interest rates drop a little bit. Yeah. We, we had more calls on our listings than the month before, mm-hmm. and I think it's people are. They're they're getting I there's a stat you know that says eighty percent of people that bought during COVID regret their purchase. So I think there's a lot of people that are gonna they they're not happy with the home they bought. It was too small, um, or too big, you know. So they're gonna look to transition too. They're just also waiting for the right time. So I think there's a lot of people that will transition right. as soon as they feel like the right time is there. Right. And it's when they feel like the right time is there, it's probably when you're gonna feel like the right time is there as well. And so you're right. gonna be timing right. it along with everybody else. Yeah. And so But you but you said people that bought during COVID think it was a mistake or something. It's like it wasn't a mistake. No. It was it, like it was the smartest decision you've made. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's like, you know, the reason why you think it was a mistake is because you felt rushed. You felt rushed and maybe you're you bought it and when you weren't you know, it was just you and you didn't have any kids and now you you get kids and you're like, hey, now it's it's time to you know to move. I just think, man, it's you just got to do it. Yeah. Like, and, but as agents, we've got to stay in front of our people, communicate with them. What? Because I think if you're thinking, hey, I'm gonna like by the end of 2024, it could be a big mistake. Yeah. I mean, when I bought our house in like 2018, people, I thought I was buying at a high time. Right. Because like. It was the highest prices had ever been then. Right. You know, it's yeah. like there's, but the person that was saying, don't wait, the market's going to crash in 2018 is the same person that's still saying, wait, the market's going to crash. Right. And they've missed that whole five year gap of like the most amazing equity that yeah. people have seen in real estate. Yeah. It's like every market, there's somebody saying, there's always going to be news or headlines that there's going to be a crash. Right. You know, it, the home prices can't go up. That's, you know, it, there's always going to be those people. Right. You got to be able to tune that out. And just decide what is a good decision for you and your family. Right. Do you need a place to live? Right. You know? Right. Then- and, I, and I think that like one of the best times to buy a house in the last 20 years was 2011. Mm-hmm. Because the home prices were down, interest rates were down. Like, was it a good time to buy in 2021 compared to 2011? No, it wasn't a good time. But 2021 was a great time to buy because all the equity you have in the home now. Yeah. No, it's, I agree. I agree 100%. So we'll kind of wrap it up here with, uh, you know, I appreciate you sharing your story and, and everything that you've guys have done. It's, I think it's amazing what you've done with the team, uh, the growth that you guys have seen. What do you think the biggest lessons, uh, what would be the biggest lesson or, uh, that you've learned along the way of growing the team? And is there anything that you would have done differently? I think the biggest thing that I always, man, it's gotta be about helping your agents. It's like, I think sometimes teams make wrong decisions based on like, like splits or like money. And it's like, man, you got to think of what is best for your age. Our, and maybe it's my background that I come from, Yeah, man, it is all about our agents. Like it's, you know, you've heard the comment, happy life, happy life, happy wife, happy, 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 happy wife, happy life. Yeah. It's the same thing. Happy agents, happy team. Yeah. And I think it is like my goal is to make our agents like happy and love it. I, you know, what would I do different? I, I know. I, th- I mean, I do, a, you know, a couple of things different. I think yeah. I, I like, I don't know. I, I think we've, we've done a lot of things wrong. Yeah. Definitely have done that. But I think, you know, like one of the things that, is we want to always grow. We want our team to always grow. We're going to yeah. be in next year. We're going to be opening some different offices in, in Utah and outside of Utah. It's like, we always want to be growing yeah. in it. I, I, you know, that have, you know, we've made mistakes or like, man, that didn't go well. Or what did we, you know, we changed that policy. Like we tried to have an, you know, more mandatory office hours and that didn't go well. I, I just think you're, you got to always be willing to change and make the thing better. I think it's like, 
you know, and not be afraid to make changes, but it's, man, it's hard. It is 85 hard. agents. Um, it's hard. You know, we got 10 staff people and you know, I worry about that. I worry how they're doing, but man, at the end of the day, you, you got to love what you're doing and your agents have got to love what they're doing. If yeah. they're not going to love it, they're going to be out playing golf or looking for <laughs> yeah. things not to come to the office. I, th I think creating a culture where it's all about you wanting the best thing for them. I, I can say most of the agents on our team, I would, I would, I would do anything for, I mean, I, I've had agents call me and say, Jack, will you set my open house signs up for me on Saturday? Yeah. And I'll tell my wife, Hey, I'm going to go put the signs out. Like, am I getting anything from that? No, but I'm helping the agents. It's all about helping each other. Yeah. And it's, and I think, and you, I think that is the reason why our team is very successful. It is built around man, wanting the best for the agents and, and helping each other. Yeah. Cause if agents are helping each other, it's going to go a long way. I, I couldn't agree more. The only way to grow is through people. Yeah. And you yeah. want to keep your people happy. That's true. If you want to grow. Yeah. Uh, and then I like what you said there, you know, you got to be willing to adapt. And I think that's a lot. That's probably one of the biggest problems I see with teams is they're not willing to adapt because right. they get comfortable doing their thing, the way right. things are structured and they don't adapt. Yeah. Um, and it's hard when you're that big 85 agents to try to make changes. Oh yeah. It's a lot of ruffling feathers, but yeah. you've got to be willing to do it because you adapt or you die. Right. Like things, you can't be doing things that you were doing 10 years ago. Yes. Those aren't working. Right. Yeah. You got to adapt yeah. with the market. So yeah. Yeah. I think you guys have the right mentality. I, I, you know, you're the number one team in Salt Lake. Your goal is to be the number one team in the country. Yeah. And I yeah. think you guys can do yeah. it. And I, I think, and the thing is you, you got to love, but I will also say this is if, and I heard this years ago, you know, if you, if you don't want to be criticized, mm -hmm. every leader is going to be criticized. If you don't want to be criticized, don't say anything, do anything or be anything. Mm. And I think that's like, we're like, we face criticism. We're like, why are you doing it that way? It's yeah. like, Hey, it's, it comes, if you step up and lead, you will be criticized. Or if you too try to build a team, like people will, some people will not like to split. Some people will like the office hours and it's just, what is the best for you and your culture yep. in the team that you're building? But it, man, it's a lot of hard work, but I wouldn't change it for anything. Love that. Yeah. You're at, if you want to do anything great, you got to be willing to have criticism. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. And if you're not getting criticism or you're not getting haters, then you're not doing anything spectacular. Right. Yeah. So, it is true. It is true. So take on that yeah. stress or just be live a normal life. So yeah. Yeah. Jack, I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate your insights. Um, again, I, I love what you guys are doing. I think you guys are going to do even bigger things over the next five years. Uh, and I'm great. I'm, I'm happy that I'm kind of a part of it in a little way right. with you guys right. at real yeah. and I get to see your growth, but, yeah. uh, but yeah. my, my closing thing, never settle for second best, mm. not only as an, an agent or a team. And that's when we're always wanting to grow. Yeah. And sometimes that drives people crazy, mm -hmm. but it's like, like you say, Jack, are you going to stop at 85 agents? No. Yeah. You're like, we're going to stop at maybe 500 and you go, Jack, stop at a hundred. The thing is, what happens is this, you have a friend that wants to join our team and we say, no, we can't add any more people. So we're always wanting to grow and help people. Smart. I love that. I've enjoyed it. It's I, been you, fun. Yeah, you guys have, I love your environment here. It's It's been a lot of, it's cool to see. You guys yeah. have built something awesome. Yeah. So appreciate you again coming on. Uh, you guys, tune in. You can follow Jack on Instagram, Jack Perry. Jack Perry Holmes. Jack Perry Holmes on Instagram. You got like 6,000 followers now. Yeah, and if I wear the same shirt once, I feel bad. Yeah, <laughs> so, dude, he never wears the same shirt. So yeah, you're going to love his content. Uh, but definitely check him out, Jack Perry Holmes. He uh, runs a top team here in Salt Lake City. So appreciate you guys coming on, and we'll catch you next time. Don't listen to people who lose, or you'll do the same. Stop talking to people who don't give a f*** what you're saying. Stop spending your money on weed, go hop on a plane Stop, Stop pointing the finger and start taking some of the blame Let me put you on game Control your emotions, most of the time it's really not worth it Don't be ashamed and beat yourself up for not being perfect